Hey there, Canada Welders. This is Nick coming at you from Vaughan, Ontario today. Uh, today we're doing the second part of our TIG ACDZ 201 Pulse D video. Last week we did DC welding on this with some mild steel plate. We did some butt joints. Today we're going to be doing AC welding uh, on this quarter inch thick aluminum. Uh, these are kind of funny looking pieces, but it's all I had laying around. So we're going to do our beads on this. I'm going to show you guys how I set up the machine because today I'm going to be using a foot pedal. We're going to lay down a bead. I had some tests here that went good. Uh, we're going to show that footage to you guys. And then in the end, we're going to wrap it up. Okay, so stay tuned. Okay, guys. So let's do the quick rundown, even though we've done this before, but maybe this is the first video you've caught. Today we got the TIG AC DC 201 Pulse D. This, we're talking it's a TIG welding machine. It's also a stick welder, but it's primarily a TIG welder. AC and DC. Today we're gonna to be welding in AC current, but you can also weld in DC current. AC current to be used for aluminum, DC current for mild steel and stainless steel. 201, don't worry about the one, it's a 200 amp machine. Pulse, because this has a pulse welding feature on it. And D, because the machine is dual voltage, which means you can plug it into a 110 or a 240 uh, outlet. So today, we're gonna be using a foot pedal. Sometimes using the foot pedal with this machine uh, can confuse people. There's a few of these settings that we're gonna need to change. So the first thing we wanna do is look here. This is my uh, hot start, I want that. That's on. Pulse. I'm not going to be running pulse today. I want to set this up simple and do my weld the way I'm used to doing it. So I'm going to turn off pulse. Here we have the two step and the four step. If you're going to be using a foot pedal, don't run it in four step. Run it in two step. All right? If you run it in four step, it's not going to work how you think it's going to and it's, it's going to mess you up. Now we want to pick AC current because today we're doing aluminum. Great. Now let's run through these values on the knob. I have 0 0.4 seconds pre-flow of gas. Good. I have zero on my upslope. Perfect. I don't want upslope because I'm using a foot pedal. Here, I can adjust how many amps are going to be on my foot pedal, basically. So if I floor the pedal, I can have a maximum, you know, 158, whatever you want it to be. I'm going to use the full range. That's the way I like to do it, and I'm comfortable with it. We have zero on the downslope. Good. You do not want up or downslope when you're using a pedal. And finally, three seconds post flow of gas. I'm happy with that. That works for me. Okay, so that's how we set up the foot pedal to do our AC welding. Also, you're gonna notice that on our foot pedal, there's a knob on the side with the values one through 10. You can use that uh, to help adjust the amp. Like, so I have the full 200 up here, but maybe I'm too lazy to walk over to my machine and change, change that 200, whoops, change that 200. I can use the knob on the machine to cut it down. I usually just turn mine right all the way up to 10 and I don't mess with it at all anymore. So that's what that's for. Okay, so next we're gonna do some of our welds and we're gonna bring in the camera nice and close and show you how that looks. Okay, so we got our piece tacked together here. We got a small gap. We're gonna run a butt joint on this quarter inch thick aluminum stuff that I found laying around. I gave it a quick once over with the wire brush just to get some of the crap off the top of it. Hopefully that's enough. Uh, for my frequency, let's see, what are we running on frequency? I put everything all in the middle. All right, yeah, so my AC frequency is gonna be at 100. Whoops. And our balancing act is gonna, our balancing is gonna be at 35. So that's just the center of both those values that I can select. If there's a problem or the weld's not running clean, we'll start adjusting them and we'll figure it out from there. But I like to just start in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead, do a weld. We're going to be filming it for you guys. We are getting better and better at filming the welds. It's very tricky to do though. We're going to film the weld and then we'll show you guys the finished product in the end. I don't know if I'm going to run the whole thing. I might just do a bead down here or a bead down here. We'll see how the camera is picking it up today and we'll just take it from there. All right, so let's get suited up and blast off on this thing.
Okay, so I didn't end up running the entire plate. I found uh, that the way I positioned myself, my gloves were getting incredibly hot, so I more or less just ran until my hand was on fire. So uh, here's one of the first ones we did. Came out pretty good, pretty good. I needed to be a little bit steadier on my foot pedal. You can see that the, uh, the width of the bead has varied a little bit as my, my speed or my, uh, my heavy foot, light foot, has made it change slightly. You can also see here, I gave these a wire brush when I was done, but you can see some of this discoloration here because at the very end, I fouled my tungsten and I touched it and that's what's gonna happen there. Then we flipped it over, we ran along this one. Key rub's definitely more consistent. I think that's probably the best looking of the bit. Uh, didn't run too, too long because my glove was already super hot, but it's coming out good. Uh, and then we did some messing around on the back too. So again, started off pretty good. I like that bead width right there fairly consistent. And then I stopped because I had a touch. Again, you can see this discoloration here that didn't quite wire brush off. I touched, broke off my tungsten, started again. And then I don't know if the camera's really picking this up for you guys, but you can see that the distance between these uh, has increased and it's piled up higher. So what I was doing was my travel speed increased, which was making everything a little bit colder. So this bead's got a higher profile and more of a space in between. I mean, it's still a TIG weld and it's fine, I mean, you know, it's good enough for whatever you're going to do, but I actually prefer them to look like this. That's my matter of personal choice. I think that this is just moving a little bit too fast and a little bit too cold for the way I like to look at it. Okay, candle welders, that pretty much sums it up for the AC section of our video on the TIG ACDC 201 Pulse D. As I promised, we welded some aluminum. I think everything went well, all in all. Uh, we've already done the DC, so next we're gonna flip this thing into stick mode. We're gonna do some stick welding with it, and then we're gonna do one more video in this series where we're gonna do some pulse welding, and that one's gonna be really cool, but I really wanna take the time to uh, set up with that and get more comfortable with running the pulse. I'm pretty good at it, but I wanna learn it better before I try to explain it to you guys. So next up is gonna be the stick welding. Uh, don't forget that if you enjoy these videos, you can go ahead and give us a like. You can hit that subscribe button too. That would be really awesome. We certainly appreciate it. Um, I've noticed more of you guys are starting to comment. You're saying good stuff. You're pointing out issues. You're giving me some content, uh, ideas, you know, machines that you want to see. I really appreciate that. It's awesome and it's invaluable to help guide the channel and what we're going to do. So thank you very much guys for doing that. And uh, until I catch you guys next week, stay safe out there. Keep making a lot of money and have a lot of fun. Thanks.